everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio, and today I'm sharing with you how I use a mood board to inspire art. This project was started on the Art Joy of Sharing live stream program last Thursday, and then I finished it up later on camera, and then this is my speed through voiced over version of the art. So you may have already seen it over there if you watch the live stream. You can still watch the live stream. It's a recorded uh, version of the real-time art, but if you prefer to watch it in a sped up version and uh, with me talking over the top of it, then this is the place for you. So Art Joy of Sharing is an art community on Facebook and we offer all kinds of different things. We have um, periodic challenges, we have um, mood boards each month like this, which I created this one this month. We kind of trade off between Peg Robinson and myself. Um, we have the live streaming channel every week on Thursday at 1030 Central Standard Time, which is 830 for me. And um, we have other artists who contribute uh, by making videos, things like that. So it's a great place to hang out. If you do want to join, the link to request that you join is um, below the video. Please remember to answer the questions because we can't accept you if you don't answer the questions that come up when you're joining. So I wanted to make a, a piece that I could hang on the wall. And I have a, I think it's probably, I'm going to say it's probably 12 by 15 or 12 by 14 um, cam, canvas pressed board. It's not got actual canvas on it. It's just a canvas texture. And I want to do an abstracted piece on it using the mood board as inspiration. So the first thing I did, uh, my printout of the mood board is terrible because my printer is just really jacked up. So I went to the to the screen and I picked out the colors that I wanted to use. And a lot of them ended up being um, Dilusions paints because they just happened to have the colors. Uh, I was looking for that tomato red, that kind of orangey red, that was my starting point. And it turned out the post box red was the one that I had that was closest to that. Then I also wanted a, a bright yellowy green, like the lettuce in the mood board. Um, I wanted some olivey greens and then um, maybe an orange or yellow color. And I ended up finding all the colors I wanted, plus then this chocolate brown, which is kind of like the lady's headscarf, all from Dilutions. I did throw in um, Naples yellow from my Liquitix line, which is a lot like the corn, the color of the corn. So I found my colors. And I was inspired by that. Then I went through and I found some different scraps of painty papers. You know, I hoard these. I have lots of them. There are a lot. A lot of them are from a gel printing. Some of them are um, from Happy Mail that people have sent me, like that one in the upper corner there. <coughs> that one was sent to me by Lori recently, and it looks like she used um, that al alcohol dripping technique to make that piece. Um, I, it had the right colors in it, so I picked it. I just threw, I just got some different pieces. Then I got out some Stencil Girl stencils, and I will list all the stencils that I used in the description box below if you'd like to go and look at them on Stencil Girl. Um, that, that doesn't help me at all. It's just, um, you know, you might be interested. They've got great stencils over there. I'm on their design team this year, and yeah, they've just got awesome stuff. It's a great company. They pay their artists well, uh, the ones that design for them. And, you know, I recommend, I recommend Stencil Girl Stencils. So I picked shapes like that kind of um, grid shape that looks a lot like the corn. Uh, I picked some round shapes because the tomatoes and the, the berries are round. I picked some arched shapes because of the arches at the Mediterranean market and then also the arch shapes on the lettuce leaves and the arched shapes in the artichoke leaves. Um, that's a common shape. So I've got my colors, I've got my shapes, I've got my painty papers, I've stenciled some of them, but I'm starting out by just layering them on. Also, because of that very dominant grid there in the center with the berry baskets and also the grid on the corn, I'm tearing my shapes into, um, rather than tearing rounded or 
um, you know, curvy shapes, I'm tearing them mostly just kind of into squares. They're not perfect squares. They're, some of them are rectangles, but I am filling them up. I filled up the whole board in the background. Then on top, I'm putting some of the pieces that I stenciled. And um, when I was making the mood board, the reason that I picked these pictures of women with the vegetables, um, August to me is a time for picking fresh vegetables, for eating fresh vegetables. I have a raised garden where I'm growing some tomatoes and we've been eating a lot of fresh vine ripened tomatoes, which are delicious. You know, all this food is coming out in August that, that um, is so, so delicious and fresh. And one thing that, that, that I really think about that is the people who are nurturing, the people who are growing, the people who are providing and concerned about these foods are women. And um, I think that that seems pretty evident. A lot of the people, maybe not in our country, but a lot of the people in other countries who farm the rice, who farm the vegetables, who sell the vegetables are women. And so... I wanted to make this also about femininity and uh, nurturing and growth. And um, so for that reason, <clears throat> I picked this stencil that I had stenciled earlier. Uh, uh, feminine, I think it's called Sacred Feminine, maybe, I'm not sure, but um, I'll certainly link it in the description box below, but it's a feminine piece uh, stencil. Um, without a face or anything like that. But then I also wanted to, uh, the thing that bothers me about the stencil is it doesn't have arms. And I don't know why, <laughs> it just doesn't. But I decided to cut out some arm pieces and a face piece from a fashion magazine, from the ads in the fashion magazine. It's actually from, I think the pieces are from three different no, I guess one the one arm, the right arm is, and face are from the same piece, and then the left arm's from a different ad. But I just wanted to add them in, so I laid everything out, my composition, laid it all out to see how I wanted it to look, um, to see if it was all balanced, and then I glued it all down with my Liquitex Matte Gel Medium and my Tim Holtz Flat Collage Brush, which I really enjoy. So I put the spiral shape behind the the feminine figure's head because I was kind of thinking about a halo or an aura. And um, I also liked this, this thing that kind of looks like three rocks that are stacked one on top of each other for one of the stencils. You know, I didn't use a whole stencil. That's one thing about stenciling. You don't have to use everything that's on the stencil. You can use just the piece that you want. And so... That's how I did it. I just, I was looking for shapes and pattern rather than like a whole stencil to cover the entire thing. So then I also had some little die cut pieces that were sent to me by Lori in the same Happy Mail package that I received some of these pretty papers that I used. And um, then this really bright piece of paper is actually from Carly. Um, she sent that as a note in my package with the punch. You remember that um, video that just came out with the gadget challenge, that paper with the bright, bright yellow on it, the almost, almost fluorescent yellow on it is from her. So once I had everything glued down and all the pieces I thought I wanted, I ended up adding some, <laughs> but all the pieces I thought I wanted in the collage, then I went back in with stencils. Um, this Tower Moon stencil has some interesting vine patterns on it and I wanted to kind of make my collage more cohesive by stenciling that vine pattern with some of the Naples yellow. Um, you can certainly stencil before, stencil after, you can stencil in between. <laughs> There's lots of ways to, to uh, take your collage and make it more cohesive by using stencils. So that's what I was doing just adding a little bit more interesting pattern. It's about growing. It's about um, Mother Earth. I mean, there's a reason why it's called Mother Earth, right? The Mother Earth nurtures us and keeps us alive by providing plants, uh, whether we grow them or whether they are naturally grown. 
um, for us to eat and, you know, animals too, if you happen to be an animal eater. So then another way to unify your collage and to unify your composition is to use your finger to just kind of add some paints. So I was adding some of that bright green. Um, I'm thinking it's like fresh squeezed lime or something like that is the name of it. Anyway, I'm sh I will list it all. I promise I will list it all. <laughs> I'll go back. I'll look what I used. I'll list them all in the description box below. Um, and then this post box red such a warm color um i don't know represents fire and and warmth and heat and things that you know other things that keep you alive so i guess my feminine figure maybe might be some sort of a a representation of mother earth or an earth warrior or an earth goddess or something i'm not sure that that thought wasn't complete in my head. I just wanted to um, use a feminine figure on here as part of my insp of, of what was inspiring me from the mood board from August. So uh, I did put on some interesting different die cut shapes um, that I also cut out some shapes and glued them on the right hand side of like little sprouts coming out of the ground. I put this piece down here at the bottom that's kind of the dirt and the, the feminine figures growing out of it. And I've got it partially this stenciled piece which I cut out and partially this piece which I collaged on from a magazine. So it's kind of, um, it's kind of got two sides to it. A little bit of duality going on there. The darker side of Mother Earth and the lighter side of Mother Earth. <laughs> because, you know, Mother Earth can kick our booties if we don't behave and, you know, nurture our world. There will be natural events that will, you know, kind of, we'll be in trouble. <laughs> so she's not always a happy, cheerful uh, jolly faced person. Sometimes she can be a mean, mean person. So, well, I mean, she's not a person at all. Spirit or um, entity or force or whatever you want to think. So I think that was pretty much the end of the live stream right there. And then I continued to work on this piece in uh, bits and I'm I was trying to work on it, then I would get interrupted, then I would get work, to, you know, so I ended up being like maybe six little videos, <laughs> but all spliced together because I kept having to go do this and get to that. And yeah, it was a crazy. So now I decided that what she really needed on that one uh, side was a wing. And so I'm drawing it with my Stabilo All Pencil. I also have been uh, making, you, you know how I love to make shadows and highlights around collage pieces. If I'd like them to be more integrated into the background, I will often go around the edges and make a shadow that then blends out. So I'm using my Stabilo All Pencil, the black one, which is highly water reactive. So then I can go ahead, I can draw it, and then I can go ahead and I can blend it out using a water tank brush. This is a tank that has a a tank, a brush that has a, a nice, very pointy synthetic bristle. Um, and then it's got water inside, which makes it a lot easier than dipping, dipping, dipping. So then I decided that the wing needed more color. It just didn't look right with only being drawn on there, like a skeleton, you know. So I filled it in with some of the red and some of the the color, the orangey color called Pure Sunshine. And then I also went back in and highlighted it all with a white Posca pen. And now you'll see me doing that now, how I did it. And I think I even am going to slow it down a little bit so you can see. I kind of just draw a point with the white Posca pen. Now, white, the Posca pens have acrylic paint in them, acrylic ink in them. It's a permanent when it's dry. It's also very opaque. And because it's in a pen form, I can very accurately apply it and then smooth it and blend it with my water brush. So I get a very intensely bright highlight. And I think that that really made the wing. It looked 
so much better after I put the white highlight on than it did in any of its its forms before that. At first I thought I would let the colors from the background come through the wing and it would be kind of, you know, the same. But then I decided I wanted to stand out more. So it definitely looks cool after I put the white posca pin on there. So then at some point I felt like the left hand side had a real big blank spot up at the top. So I went back and I stenciled a piece of deli paper that had that Naples yellow color on it already with a tree stencil from I think the I think it's the one that has the sacred feminine form on it, I think. And I used that chocolate brown color, which I thought was lacking a little bit in the composition. I didn't have enough of it. There was some on the right, some at the bottom, but there wasn't really any up on that other side. So when I put the tree there, um, it kind of, to me, that's kind of a second focal point, sort of. And I've got the rocks, the earth, the rocks. I've got the molten core at the bottom, and then the rocks are coming up, and then the trees are growing out from it. So... Um, I was really happy with that after I figured out that I needed to put something up there. It just wasn't complete. And then I also added on this die cut piece over here on the side, it stopped. It was very um, rectangular at the ends. So I added some leaves to that piece as well, cut out leaves. And then I thought, well, what if she had kind of the, the, idea of a wing on the other side made out of leaves. So I took that same paper and I cut a few leaves and just started to create a different wing on the other side uh, with the leaves. Same kind of olivey green color. And of course shadowing them, highlighting them to make them stand out more from the background. I ended up adding a little bit of the uh, pure sunshine and the red to it. Then the other thing I wanted to do was paint over the top of my cutout pieces that I put on from the fashion magazine. They don't blend in as much when they just look like cutout pieces from the magazine. So I like to paint over the top of them and make them look more, more painterly. <laughs> like um, I actually made them. This is, this is just really almost kind of like a shortcut. If you don't feel comfortable making faces and bodies, you can certainly cut them out and paint over them. And it already gives you the idea of where the shadows and highlights are. And it's it makes it an easy way to do a figure. So um, I also thought that she needed some hair. And I decided to make black hair because the original person that I cut out had black hair. So I start in with that. And I'm using the Neo Color 2 water soluble crayons to do this and I mix it a little bit with some acrylic paint. Um, you see my hand going over to the, the left side every once in a while to pick up some acrylic paint onto my brush which helps it blend more smoothly. And there are, this is jumping around, not jumping around, but um, there are pieces missing because I would have to turn off the camera and then I'd come back in forget to turn the camera back on. It was, it was, um, <laughs> yeah, I just kept getting interrupted all day long. Couldn't get things done at all. Um, then I added some real fine details with an extra small pin and I also used a black Posca pin on the hair a little bit. I added some blue highlights to the hair because lots of times when you have very dark black hair, in the sun, it looks like it has blue highlights. So um, that's where I'm doing that. Still using the crayons. And I'm just uh, just scribbling the crayons onto my under paper and picking it up with the water brush. <clears throat> I used the bright green on her eyes and then came back in with some pupils. And the process of painting over the picture is multiple layers. So, you know, you just keep going back in and going back in until you're happy. So that's what I did. <clears throat> Here's the, the Posca pin, just adding some, some darker undertones to the hair, adding a pupil to the eye, things like that. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, 
just remember that if you want to be inspired by a mood board, <clears throat> if it has a piece of corn on it, that doesn't mean you have to put a piece of corn in your art. It doesn't mean you need a lettuce in your art or an artichoke. It means that these are the colors and shapes that are inspiring me right now, and maybe <clears throat> they will inspire you too. And so you see how I came to this piece of art from that. It's not the same. It's just inspiring it. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Thumbs up, comment, subscribe, all those things. Share. And that's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.